talked about command and control. Um, uh, function that calls the receiver to enter it graphically. Oh, yeah, so that's what that's what we're doing. So one of the things, when they are using send and receive, um, a lot of times it'll be a, well, sometimes it'll be a, a binary protocol rather than, you know, the actor sending, hey, give me a dir space c colon slash. It'll be a First, but the first four bytes is a little Indian integer that is the command code, like we saw with the NBA implant. And you'll see that. Um, oh, I didn't save. Where did my Where did the implant go? Did it boot it? Where is it? Oh, <laughs> I put it in there. Um, so if we retake a look at the receive function, seeing, yeah. seeing this structure here, a receive and then a switch case. Um, big indication that they're doing a proprietary binary protocol uh, that that you can <coughs> figure out um, by by taking a look at okay what's that like like we did walk through what's what are they using the jump table okay it's the first four bytes they're doing that compare with six five hex so it has to be sixty six hex because of the last one or below. Um, coming up with the parameters of what the the packet look like um, is possible when you see a receive on the, the jump table here. Another example, instead of using a jump table, like I said in the intro class, a, a switch case can also be represented like a if else if, else if, else if, else, kind of syntax, uh, kind of mock that up here for there's a compare, and then a jump zero to, you know, do, do that function, um, else if, else if, else. Um, so just, just be aware of this syntax as well. Um, and if you're Really clever. What rookie programming mistake is in this block of code? Just take a, a quick look at it. Yep, that's what I was looking for. Does an error check to make sure the receive succeeds? Um, I mocked this up, but I have actually seen that, um, as well as, as other things, as Corey has, has pointed out. Um, the error checking in malware isn't always the best. Well, wait, so what would that look like then? What would what look like? What would, what would correct error checking look like then? Uh, is if, if they did a compare, so the Return value from receive would be in EAX if they did a compare on EAX. Okay. Right after the receive, and if it's a. Um, oh, okay. So they're using buffer like a global variable. Check that. Essentially. Yeah. Okay. They should just be. They should be double checking the receive value, and if it was a, if it errored, then they shouldn't be going through all that. Indicators. Um, as I've mentioned, hard coded static strings can make good indicators if they're using user agent, good example, or a hard coded URL that they go to. Um, constant packet size, like, like we saw, um, then a snort signature that would be using like the D size, um, or a, a specific range, maybe. Um, or uh, 
There you go. Base64 encoded data. That's the kind of um, radio expression that you can use in a network indicator. You have to be careful of your base rate, though. Yep. Very, very careful. Those have significant flaws. Oh, yeah. Thankfully. Yep. No, that's, I was going to get into that. Um, whenever you're constructing things like this, it's ideally you'll have some test data from your live network. You know, maybe a few days worth of packet capture from, from your gateway that you can test with and run these over or wherever you're going to be deploying the, the signature. And you can tune your signature that way. But just be aware, whenever you're creating custom signatures, you're going to need some tuning, either um, to reduce false positives or to um, reduce the, the false negatives. Either way, tune it up or tune it down, basically. And, and be aware, know where your signature will be used. If it's going to be, you're detecting HTTP traffic and it's going through a proxy, that proxy might change how the traffic looks like, adding of a exported tool or a via, um, or changing the order of the, the headers. Could happen. Don't give up that C2 is encrypted. This is something from my, well, the, the lesson is from my personal experience, this specific, the specifics of it aren't, but if you're dealing with uh, C2, command and control, and it is actually using encryption, um, don't just give up and say we can't come up with a, a, uh, a signature for that. I, I don't say, you know, I can't provide anything to the networking folks because how they're using the encryption can affect it if they are using it in um, constant block sizes and they are um, have a, a particular key that they're using even though you don't know all of the data if you know some of the data like there's a big chunk of null bytes that will be uh, sent then when that's encrypted and it's um, uh, in a block based format you're going to see um, those null bytes um, in a repeating pattern. So just be aware of, of things like that. Um, how they're using these API calls um, and how they're using these, these libraries uh, can, can affect how you can do the detection of that. Okay. Yeah. Any questions on the networking stuff? No? We good? Okay. What, what sort of, in, in now where you look at, do, do they try to beacon out with TCP connections or, or UDP, UDP packets or? Whatever will get out of the network. They have to have a concept of that. So I imagine what, like, port 80, obviously. DNS serves as the lowest compromise. Whatever will get out of the network. You know, that's, that's, what, that's what they'll use. Um, I can talk about specifics that I see later, but. I mean, the, the short answer is whatever's going to get out of the network, they're going to use it. You just make a wrap. That's probably aware of done. Yeah. Anybody can do it. Yeah. You also want to make a command and control and beaconing protocol that is more resilient. Chip, for instance, you know, what, even if, uh, even if you're NAC, 
you know, you've been maxed to hell, um, you know, you have maybe a shot at DNS work, right? You won't be able to use DNS to find your Mac controller, even if you can't get out from your tubes, right? But put your, put your, totally your bits in your DNS. Oh, yeah. And you just inject into Internet Explorer. Which Poison Ivy does that. 